the levels now of expectation would eventually, with the evolution, start to become higher. And my own level, as well as a promoter, I kept wanting to up that as well. So I started by doing little shows. And then one day I said, you know what? It's still not working. It's been going on for years, but somehow we are not respected by the Americans for the talent that we have here. Like, they don't recognize us. And to me, this is bothering me because I'm like, I'm a good judge of talent. I got guys up here kicking it. You know, I, I see it happening. I, I see the Mishimis happening. I see the Maestros happening. I see the K-Forces. I see the Superior Jays. I, you know, I've seen the Butch, the Butch Lees, the Rumbles and Strongs. There, there's all these beat factories there. I mean, every year it's getting better and better and better. There's all these artists that are around me. How can we put them on the, on the map? You know, and it came to me one day, I said, you know what, the best way to do it is to battle. And battling was a whole thing that was American. In Canada, people didn't know what battling was. There was hardly, any, the, the only thing that we saw was the odd breakdancing competition. But in terms of certifying our talent and um, publicizing it to the world, what better way to do it than to have Canada versus America? If we could battle them, put our MCs up against their MCs, put our beatboxers up against their beatboxers, put our, our DJs <laughs> up against their DJs. You know what I mean? Like there's so many opportunities there to shine. I booked artists from Canada and I booked artists from America and I created events and I did this twice where um, they were the battles. And after those events were done, and the people will tell you more about this than me as a promoter, okay? But after these events were done, the landscape changed because for the first time, Canada was on the map because we kicked ass. And America's best talent, it was like Canada versus Russia, okay? America's best talent came to Canada and discovered this new frontier. And they were pompous and cocky and overconfident thinking that, oh, we are nothing up here. But guess what? <laughs> By the time the battle was done, we were something and we were recognized. As, ask Bismarcky to this day, he will tell you about him coming to Canada and, and what it was like battling against people like, you know, Mighty Mouth Rock. And anyway, it, it goes on and on. We have, we have stakeholders now. That's what's changed, okay? We now, um, are recognized as this new frontier. And the common denominator would be that uh, the first set of artists that are Canadian that would be signed would be signed to American companies. They came here and they scouted after they recognized the town that we have. And they started, we didn't know to do it for ourselves, so they taken our best artists, you know? Dream Warriors, uh, that went to England. Uh, Maestro Fresh West went to LMR Records in the States. Uh, Mishi Me went to Priority. Uh, Rumbling Strong would go to, to, to England. <laughs> I mean, Canada was the last to recognize its own talent. And again, the, infra the infrastructure wasn't there anyway if they were given the opportunity to, to deal with that talent. And uh, I think that was proven because it took years for that to kind of evolve itself.